you had Chuameni. It was him. He does this thing where he just turns two defenders and he spins with the ball and then he plays this vertical pass. Pogba rides a challenge, stays on his feet as he's like getting dragged to the floor. He plays it out wide. Um, that leads to Teo Hernandez hitting the crossbar. That would have been an amazing goal. Like I think if that went in, we would have been talking about that as as just one of the great team build up goals of this international break. And and then like seconds later, Spain come the other way. Busquets plays a stink pass to uh, to Oyarzabal. And I don't know. I thought like France's center backs had a great game overall. I thought out of the three in particular, Koundé was awesome. Strong challenges everywhere. He was throwing around Ferran quite quite easily. He was getting the better of Gavi because he's just much stronger than Gavi, just and he was much quicker than Oyarzabal on the wing. Koundé was a standout to me, but then you have Upamecano comes in, and obviously he comes in for the injured Varan, right? Um, and I don't know what he was doing. He just looked confused. He looked like he, you know, he he kind of misread the play and then he couldn't recover, and the ball just kind of bounces off him. Doesn't deal with it well, and Oyarzabal scores. And I thought, I was like, yes, this is going to open things up a bit big time. And then seconds later, Benzema just cancels it out with a moment of magic. So I kind of, this is this is a really cop-out thing to say. I honestly felt like that when Benzema let that fly, I thought it was going in. I was like, if that's going in, you can see the trajectory. You can look at the way he hit it. I thought he, he just got it perfect. You can't hit anything more perfect than that. The way he cut in. Just an incredible moment of just like dropping your balls on the field. High stake moment. It's a final. I thought it was phenomenal. I jumped out of my seat. Happy for happy for Big Ben's man of the match award. Um, clearly, I was just so happy for him in that moment. And really, like you can see, like to be quite honest, like France just has has really used his superstar aura since recalling him to the French national team. And I think it's taken some time. It's taken some time for it to click and it still hasn't fully clicked with him Griezmann and, and Mbappe together fully I don't think I don't think we've seen the best of it yet uh, I don't know if Deschamps will be the man who will finally figure that out but I, I think him in a vacuum he's looking more and more comfortable and he's really taking the leadership role too and it's amazing you think about like he hasn't been in the national team for what five six years was it more than that I can't remember he comes in and he's immediately the leader. He's he's the captain of the ship. He's you know he's giving away penalties to Mbappe. He's giving confidence to the team. He's giving some something some oomph to the attack. I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, I'm continually impressed by this man. He's been amazing. Yeah, I mean that that Spangle Upe Meccano. I don't know what was going on there. I was shocked in defending. Like, and I've I haven't seen enough of him to um, know whether or not this. is like a consistent theme in his game but i have seen things like social media and online that like he does have a blunder like this in him um and so it it obviously gets magnified being on at this scale on the international level in a final but definitely uh definitely sees his stock drop a little bit there um and i was actually surprised that kimpepe started over lucas hernandez because with Kunde and Lucas Hernandez, you have the option with both to do that elbow back roll that that Ohm often talks about because uh, they're both comfortable playing either as right back or left back. And so um, in a three back, three center back system, they can either of them are com- can be options as the elbow back there. So I was surprised he he, uh, he got dropped for this match. But um, going back to, to Benzema and the goal, like, like you said, I mean, it was... I feel like it was the prototypical FIFA goal that everyone tries to score, like cut in down R1, curve it, and then curl it into the to yeah. upper 90 of the opposite opposite corner. Literally just perfect, perfect goal. Um, and just Benzema deserves it. Like, I do you think, is it fair to, is this like outlandish or is it fair to say that he's, this start of the season, he's performed close to peak, Messi, Ronaldo levels. Is that fair to say? Benzema right now, close to peak Messi, right now, Ronaldo levels? Right now, the start of the season, yeah. The numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. I, at this current juncture of the season ended now, yes. The reason I hesitate to say that is not because what you're saying is necessarily wrong, but because my my brain is already programmed to know that 
what we're no seeing from Ben. Yeah. Well, what we're seeing from Benzema right now, Ronaldo and Messi have been doing for over a decade, which yeah. is just yeah. crazy. And that's why they're the, they're the two goats. And like, yeah. so that. And but look, to be fair, you know, Lewandowski has had a crazy stretch too. And I don't like if we're talking about Benzema doing this. I think we have to talk about him. So, but I'm just saying this moment in yeah. time, like this small subset of the yeah. season. Yeah, he's versus... been he's been unstoppable. Yeah, he's yeah. there's no two way, there's no there's yeah. no way around it. He's been unstoppable. He's yeah. exactly what we need. Exactly what anyone needs right now in their team. Like he's just he scores. He he's he's far from a stationary striker. He defends. That that's not something you see. Like a lot of these unicorns we see offensively, they're yeah. devoid of defensive duties. They don't yeah. press. They conserve their energy. Benzema is just start to finish he's just one to like full throttle minute one to 90 defensively working hard like it pressing tracking everything like it's just crazy over the last 12 here's another question for you over the last 12 months or even 18 months would you say Benzema is a better player than Mbappe yeah yeah I think I would too, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's that controversial. I mean, it might be on football Twitter with the guys with the Mbappe avatars, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I, I I think from just everything standpoint, when you factor in everything, the holistic approach to the game, the defensive ability, the pressing, the link-up play, the leadership, plus the goals, the assists, the playmaking, all that stuff, the consistency, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's true. And that's why he will be a, a higher candidate than Mbappe in the Ballon d'Or ranking. He will be. I hope he will be. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, so Yeah, well, that'll be actually be interesting to see how that plays out because, like, I just feel, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just us Real Madrid fans, but, like, I don't know if the rest of the footballing world is, like, campaigning him or anything like even to get on the podium like i don't even know like i just don't know what uh the reaction is outside of real madrid circles that's the thing and i and I, i'm not going to name any country because i that i feel like that would be irresponsible of me but when you look at the way ballon d'Or is voted and every single country in the world gets rep- a representative to vote and you just go down the list alphabetical order of these countries and who they're voting for it's like dude you can't just vote for the player from your country. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so that's not always the case, but I do feel like there's not a complete, um, there's not a complete science. Like there, there's, it's very possible this goes wrong and that's a Ballon d'Or has gone wrong. It's not necessarily an objective vote, um, but it is what it is. I, th- I think the general consensus, hopefully we'll see, you know, what Benzema has done. I, I'm not going to necessarily say he is the clear cut. He should win it. But I think top three is a fair place, and and number one would be a fair place as well. But you know, I would understand if Lewandowski wanted to be honest. He's been he's been phenomenal. Um, this leads us to the Mbappe goal. So, I after Mbappe scored that goal, I basically couldn't watch the game because it just out of confusion as to why that goal counted. I was very confused. I spent the entire second half after that goal after that point reading rules of the game the fifa rules and i kind of went back and forth on it i actually never thought it was a good call but i think i've landed somewhere as an open-minded human that by the book that is possibly the right call but i don't like it i don't like the rule that's where i've landed on so a lot of people are posting this image on twitter showing that he was offside and showing the lines like yeah we know that part that's not what's debate what the referee explained was that basically the the pass from Teo was not where the, this play started. It basically got technically reset when the ball hits Eric Garcia's foot. When Eric Garcia is trying to slide and make an interception, he actually, obviously, out of no intention, he's the one who plays it to Mbappe, and that's why it wasn't offside. I don't like the rule. I think the primal point of the play should be where Teo passes it, and that's that. Uh, so I guess call me a, call me an old head, called me someone who I, the, by the book, it's a goal. Fine. I don't like it. Just change it so that, that, that needs to be accounted for. Like, I don't, 